next guest is a longtime Republican who last year called for the impeachment of Donald Trump and this year endorsed Joe Biden at the Democratic National Convention. Please welcome the former governor of Ohio, John Kasich. Hello, John. Hello, Governor. How are you, Jimmy? I'm doing well. Governor, do you remember? Good to see you long, again. It's good to see you. How long ago it was when you were here last in our studio? It's, I guess it was about a year ago, right? Yes. Maybe a little less. It seems like five years ago. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, Jimmy, I was uh, talking to my friends the other day about all the things that have happened in the last year. Uh, it was just coincidental you'd asked a question. I'll tell you, you think about this. We had impeachment. We've got, of course, the terrible corona. We had a debate about masks. Early voting's being called a fraud. We got a new justice. We had storms. We had wildfires. We saw his taxes. They gassed the protesters. He had a motorcade. And then Meghan and Harry left England. And all that's happened in the last year. It's like going, it's like going to a it's like going to a dance club, right? And you know, you start dancing and the music gets faster and you dance harder and harder and harder. And finally somebody shouts, stop the music, because the chaos has become unbearable. And I think people are fed up with it in America. I think Billy Joel needs to get to work writing another We Didn't Start the Fire about the last six months of our lives. They, and I, Unbelievable. And by the way, don't think I didn't enjoy your dancing, your dance club moves there, because they were. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that was the perfect analogy, I think, for you. <laughs> hey, listen, I can dance, even to the Foo Fighters. Are you a good dancer? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I danced in Michigan on the stage when I was running for president. All right, all one right. of the big magazines said the guy can do it. You spoke at the DNC. Did you ever imagine right. uh, that you would find yourself in a, that position in your life? You know, Jimmy, throughout my career, I've always kind of put the country be, before my party. And I also, this is not a new swim lane for me. I've worked with Democrats to, to you know, balance the federal budget. You know, I... We expanded Medicaid in Ohio, where I had to have support from Democrats. So, you know, I looked at that as an opportunity to say, look, knock off all the partisanship and figure out what's in the best interest of the country. And I went for Biden because I've known him a long time, and I think he can bring everybody together. And a lot of Republicans are concerned that he's going to get swamped by the left. I hope not. If he gets swamped by the left and goes the wrong way, I'm going to criticize him. You know, and I'm going to hold them accountable as best as I can. But I thought it was important to give people permission to not have to be just a, you know, a partisan. You, you can be free. To, you can think the way you want. You can do what you want. And you don't have to be trapped by anybody or anything. So it was, uh, it was different, but it was, um, it was good. And I enjoyed it. Have you cast your vote yet officially? I have not. But my daughters, uh, Em and Reese, are, are home from school, and they're going to be with us tomorrow night. And we're going to all my wife and my daughters and I are going to are going to cast our ballots tomorrow. We're going to be voting absentee. Vote as a family. Do you sit around and discuss ballot items and that sort of thing? <laughs> no, we usually they usually want to talk about dad. You know, that's not the right clothes you have on. Oh, we don't I see. like your tie. Uh -huh. uh, you know, <laughs> it's really important, Jimmy. Not all this political stuff, but they're they're very aware. Look, since they were very very young, I've been in public life, uh, and they they've taken it well. And you know, my wife, she you know appreciates public life, but never sought you know kind of the limelight. Although she should, because she's incredible. But uh, as a family, we don't spend a lot of time talking about politics. We have too many other important things to talk about. Not that politics isn't important. But they understand they need to make a difference in the world. They know that. Speaking of wardrobe, you're, I know you're wearing a blue jacket, a blue shirt, and a blue tie. Is that a message to your party? Oh, I hadn't no. thought about that. <laughs> good, though, doesn't it, Jimmy? It looks pretty good. <laughs> Did you hear what Ben Sass, the uh, senator from Nebraska, there was a tape. He was speaking privately to a group of donors today. And the tape was released by someone. He, say, he spoke about Trump. He said Trump kisses dictators' butts. He sells out our allies. He mocks evangelicals. He flirts with white supremacists. He treats the presidency like a business opportunity and spends like a drunken sailor. Is that something, are those conversations that are had privately between Republicans about Donald Trump? Jimmy, just one thing. You know, one time I, I said when I was in the Congress that some we were spending like a drunken sailor, and I got a letter from a lady. She said, I'm deeply offended because my husband is a drunken sailor. <laughs> Nevertheless, you know, it, here's, here's, here's what's concerning to me. What's been concerning to me 
is that my party, the Republican Party, has ceased to be a, a, a party of ideas, whether it's on the environment, whether it's on health care, whether it's on debt. They still don't have a health care plan. And, you know, when I was in Congress and even as governor, I always thought you lead with ideas and sometimes you'll be criticized for them. But it's been disappointing that they haven't stood up. Now, the Democrats, you know, could have a really good have a good election this time, but they've got to make sure they don't veer far left, Jimmy, because I think, you know, that the practicality of our country is people coming in the middle and, and, and growing the base from the middle out, not the extremes in. So and if if the Republicans don't get their act together and if the Democrats go far left, I think there's room for a third party in America. I think it could actually happen. I think the ground is fertile for that. We just have to wait and see. Governor, does it surprise or disappoint you that Trump goes around talking about this election as if it is fixed, as if mail-in ballots are, are, you know, <sighs> are, are, are going to be a disaster? And this is something that we all know that there's no evidence to support that. Um, if there was, That's we correct. would certainly know about it. And yet no sitting Republicans, no prominent sitting Republicans that I know of have, have stood up and said, hold on a second, this is not true. Mail in your ballots, it's perfectly fine. I mean, the consequences of uh, people feeling that the, they were slighted uh, when they went to the, the polls are really, are potentially very dangerous. Jimmy, think about this. If uh, when these results are in, we will have as many, you know, maybe as much as 20 percent of the public saying that the election was not legitimate. If you have a situation like that and people don't legitimize the election, that is a very dangerous road we go down. So the president, by first of all, he, he hurt his own supporters by saying that this is all fraud because now they're not going to vote by mail. And, and uh, you know, and the Democrats are voting by mail in avalanche numbers. Uh, but secondly, to create and sow discord and doubt about the legitimacy of a presidential election, it's, it's dangerous and it should never have happened. And here in Ohio, we've had mail-in voting for, you know, like 15 years and, and they do it well and we found no instances of fraud. That's just a big joke. It's, it's, and it's wrong. Well, thank you, Governor, for uh, for speaking up about this stuff. I always enjoy talking to you. And um, do you think will you go to the inauguration if um, if Biden wins? I I think I'll probably be right here in Ohio, okay. you know, <laughs> watching it on television. I, you know, enough is enough. And I'm hoping my party will get back on its feet. We'll see. I'm still a Republican. I'm a conservative, but uh, I think it's really important that listen. And for everybody who's watching. You, look, America works best from the bottom up. So when the public has a clear voice, they, they tell the lawmakers what they want and they get what they want. But when the public's fighting with one another, a clear voice cannot emerge. And I just beg you to start, stop just reading what you agree with, read something else and come together. And remember, we're all made in the image of the Lord. Respect one another. Governor John Kasich. Thank you, Governor. We'll be right back with the Foo Fighters. If you like that video, then put a ring on it. Click the subscribe button below. Uh-oh. Uh, uh.